Hi, I'm Darnell Cox with Live Young Lifestyle and I'm here again with Dr. Dan Yamini at Sunset Cosmetic Surgery and today we're going to talk about Botox. Is it moving? moving a little bit. I've always thought of Botox as preventative for anti-aging. You know, always try to catch the wrinkles before they start. There's a lot of things that I always tell my clients about the right way to do Botox and who to go to. So first of all, what is your thought about like the Botox parties and, and different things like that? For me, safety is always number one. I believe anybody who uses Botox properly and has a lot of experience with it, uh, like a plastic surgeon, a dermatologist, mm -hmm. an oculoplastic surgeon, doctors who specialize around the eyes and That's face. That's interesting. Anybody who does this enough and really studies this well, I think is qualified. Right. And there are even nurses or physician assistants who actually can do a good job. Yeah, there are like those Botox wizards in your area, like Nurse Jamie yes. is somebody that I've also gone to for a very long time. Hello. Thank you so much for like working on me once again. Wow. I but she does this all the time. So what you right. don't want to do is go to somebody who spent, you know, a couple hours getting their certificate when it's not right. even the field that they're in. Right. So, uh, you just don't know how much experience they have. Yes. Do yeah. not get Botox from your gynecologist. That's not even the area that they specialize in. And start small, right? Totally. You, you don't want to go in and just have a frozen face because there's a lot of bad things that can happen with that. One of the biggest problems I've seen is people coming in Number one, they have no idea what they got injected, how much they got injected. And personally, I think most patients are getting really overdosed. Too much. They're Way getting too, too much. frozen, the muscles are too relaxed, and the faces just don't move naturally. Right. In my practice, patients want to look natural. Mm -hmm. Okay. They want to look refreshed, they want to look like themselves, but just the best version of themselves. Right. And Which is why I always carry my little black Botox book. Dear God. Beautiful. That tells me every treatment I've had, there's a little map of my face and what we've put into each area. So exactly. I think that that's really important. You have to be proactive in your own anti-aging. You have to have the knowledge. What are some of the other things that can happen, you know, that are not good results from Botox? Well, there are certain muscles that we inject that if you over inject, uh, they're not going to function right, like swallowing muscles. When, mm -hmm. we, when we inject your neck later to smooth out the jawline and give you a, what's called a Nefertiti lift to lift the jaw, if we're not careful, uh, it can affect your swallowing. Your swallowing, it can be difficult to right. swallow. Right. Another problem is when we inject around the smile. If you don't inject the right muscles or you over inject, you you'll can't, get a, it's not, you have like this you'll look. You'll get a crooked smile and right. you may even look like you had a stroke. Now one, oh, that's not good. That that's not, not a good a, look. not a good look. So one time, uh, my Botox blunder, um, I, there was a concierge that would come to your house I, and I'd, I'd used her from a different doctor and it was close to Halloween and she mm -hmm. hit an, one of those troughs in your eye and I had an eyelid that went like this. I had to become a pirate for Halloween. That is a very common problem. If you over relax a muscle, mm -hmm. then the eye uh, muscles will drop, yeah. your eyebrows will drop and you'll look sleepy. Yeah. And you just, it will change the appearance of your face. And it was only face. like one eye. Like I had one eye that was like Usually this. It was horrible. Usually it's one eye because our faces are asymmetric. The muscles in our face are always different. That's yeah. why I always keep a very meticulous record yeah. of every single dosage and every muscle. And that's why I come to you. You're one of the only ones that I've ever seen that will literally keep a map of my face. I do it every and, time. And what what dosage was put where so that when we start on a new place, for example, I started getting like little bunny lines in here that when I would speak, I noticed mm -hmm. I was getting these little lines and we started slow. We just yes. did a little bit first. I came back in in two weeks. We knew you knew exactly how much you put in, and then in two weeks when we did the touch up, we knew exactly what that total was. So that the next time I came in, it was a no brainer. Exactly is, like yeah. any other medication, like blood pressure or cholesterol medication. Right. You start with the lowest, safest dose, something very conservative. Then you check the response to see if you're getting the right response, and then. If you need to go higher, then you go higher. Right. So what we've done over the years with your Botox treatments is I keep track of very moderate conservative doses. Together we decide, okay, is this a good look? Is it a natural right. look? 
And then if we need to adjust the dose or adjust the location of the muscle, then we can kind of customize right. the Botox mm -hmm. for exactly the look you're going for. Yeah. So the good thing about this treatment, not only is it preventative, but it wears off. It's not permanent. So if for some reason you have a Botox mishap, um, which you shouldn't if you follow those rules, but it, you know, in four months, you're back to normal. Yes. Typically, if you're putting a very small dose, the average muscle will be relaxed for two to three months. Right. If you're putting a stronger dose, somewhere between three to four months. Yeah. In rare cases, it could last longer. But that's the beauty of Botox. It is not permanent. The same way our facial movements are not meant to be permanently frozen. Right, exactly. There are other ways to use Botox, because I know that my daughter, you treat her in these muscles here. Right. She grinds her teeth. I use it on myself too. All of us have stress. Yeah. A lot of us carry our stress in our jaws, our jaw. in the masseter uh -huh. muscles and we get TMJ problems with our joints. And in the long term, if we don't take care of it, we can actually get arthritis, which is very painful and debilitating. Also, I recommend all my patients to see an oral maxillofacial surgeon, right. somebody who can do CAT scans of your jaw and really make sure that all the bones and all the joints are intact. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take care of their Botox. It will also help with migraines and headaches. So where are you, are you injecting in the temples for migraines? Yes, so there's muscles here in the jaw and here in the temple that we inject and it will relax the so tightness. So you won't get that tension kind you, of? You won't get that tension, you won't feel like your jaw is exploding mm -hmm. from all that. Now stuff. I get like migraines, not, not the ones that hurt, but the ones that I think I'm sensitive to light and mm -hmm. to squinting. And so when I get Botox around my eyes, I can tell when it's wearing off based on if I'm starting yes. to get those kind of mi migraines. Actually, Botox was invented in the late 70s for treatment around the eyes, for twitching around the eyes by eye doctors. Interesting. And in fact, Allergan, the company who invented it, is an eye company. That's where it all got started. And then they realized, oh, by relaxing the muscles and uh, reducing the twitching, you're actually removing the wrinkles. And after years and years of research, they realized, well, where do we have wrinkles? Here in right. our frown lines, in our forehead. And with a lot of careful research uh, through the FDA, they came up with the right dosing and the right patterns of injection. Yeah. For your neck, we've been using approximately 16 units because it's a very large muscle. And you have mm -hmm. a little bit of your patisma yeah. muscle coming back. So today we're gonna okay. treat this band by injecting the muscle right here okay and by doing that it will help lift the jawline and your cheek up so it, it can define the, it the helps define it yeah because line. the neck muscles if you look they're pulling your face down so by relaxing oh, yeah. see, it, even by you pulling down mm -hmm. you can see this band come you can see the jowls and the uh -huh. jawline and even the cheek comes down because that's what the platysma does by relaxing it it won't pull it down it'll mm -hmm. go up and I have found just by, by getting Botox in my neck, it softens all of the lines. It just looks like a younger neck to me. So are there any downsides to this? Like I said, no medication has been tested more than Botox. It is extremely, extremely rare for someone to have a severe allergy to it. Okay. If you use it properly in the right dosage, there's never been a reported case of anything fatal or anything dangerous happening with cosmetic Botox. Okay, and the cost just depends on how many places you do it. How much Botox you use depends on how much muscle you're treating. So okay. if you're treating a small muscle, let's say here, you may uh, need only 10 units. If okay. you're using very strong muscles, I get 25 units in my jaw. But I do have to say this, if you've never done Botox before and you don't know how you bruise, because it is a needle going into your muscle, you do not want to drink before. Um, so I would, I always like don't have, I don't have any cocktails two or three days yes. before, especially wine, because that thins your blood. The precautions is to avoid the blood thinners like aspirin and Advil. Uh -huh. Fish oils, anything like that, vitamin E's, stay away from that. So a couple and days- if you're on your menstrual cycle. That's exactly it right. It really thins your blood and it causes more pain. That's right, perfect. Okay, so let's start poking me. Let's do it. <laughs> So 
there you have it. My Botox is done. Usually I just go home, throw a little makeup on, and I'm good to go. You know, for me, this is all about prevention. At almost 50 years old, I have been doing a lot of prevention over the years. But the best wrinkle is the one you never get, and that is a really good way to live young.